والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الحمد لله you're watching the beauties of Islam I'm Yusuf Estes and I wanted to continue talking about this beautiful concept in Islam about rationale using the brain the aql and at the same time when to accept something that's bigger than our own brain by that I'm meaning of course the teachings of Allah now if somebody came up to you I don't know somebody you don't know them and they just started telling you crazy things he'd look around and say what is he's talking about if he said it's snowing outside but it's in summertime and you know it you look out the window and you say well I don't see any snow he say no it's snowing you consider this guy's a nut and if somebody came up to you and started telling you that it was daylight outside but it's the middle of the night again you'd say this kind of crazy stuff why should i believe this guy regardless of how well he could present himself regardless of how well he could articulate or speak to me still at the same time he's not making any sense i don't understand okay that's not logical that's not rational therefore you shouldn't take it but when things are all stacking up and the person keeps telling you one thing after the other you know is true you know this is true this is a fact this is proven this has evidence this is authentic and finally he tells you something you don't know but he's been so accurate on all the other points he never lied to you he's only told you the truth and he's told you things you didn't know before but now you were able to discover wow this is something amazing now when he tells you something that this one thing though i don't know it I don't have a proof for that will I believe him and that's where there's something in your mind that should take over and say look the rationale here is to stop arguing because my rationale isn't strong enough to understand because this man has given me more than I understand already and he's not lying to me on anything else why can I not now accept what he said it would only be because of what's called a prejudice i have a personal prejudice against something and i just want to believe it my way i don't want to accept his way i don't want to accept what he said but it's not because of real logic anymore when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala god almighty speaks to us in the quran did you know that he speaks to everybody it's true because he created every single thing and he created everybody it only makes sense that when he speaks he would talk to all of us in the quran allah begins by telling you who the quran is from he said bismillahir rahmanir rahim and this is the beginning of the quran and this is a very beautiful logical conclusion to make that it must be from god because he's telling you it is bismillahir rahmanir rahim in the name of allah the most merciful the especially merciful all the way through as we read this quran do you know we never find anything that really logic goes against our logic it really doesn't there are things that we don't know there are things that we've come to know over the centuries to be absolute fact but the biggest thing of all it talks about allah on almost every single page out of 604 pages Allah is talking about himself on all but two. Can you imagine that? His names, his attributes are on every single page. Woo! And that's not all. The message doesn't change. It is always a message to the mankind. Another point when we find that Allah speaks not just to those who believe already, in this case he would call on them as believers. Ya yuladina amanu all you who have faith you come to believe amanu but he also says are you on nabi which means he's speaking to his prophet and then again he also says to those who are disbelievers ya you al kafiru those who have no faith at all no belief disbelievers liars allah speaks to all of the creation in his book Is that amazing? Well, you say, well, somebody could have made it up. They could have. Maybe. 
or maybe not. One of the things that we find throughout the Quran is the beautiful way that it all ties together. It doesn't get lost. It continues. You'll have a theme, you'll have a discussion, you'll have a rational argument being presented, and then it'll wind it up, and then we'll talk about a law at the end of each one of them. It will tell you something about a law at the end of each argument, and then it will continue again, giving you another rational argument. So many times throughout the Quran, I've heard our teachers tell us how it is that Allah presents something for you to contemplate, to think about. Now, some of the things are just very clear. For instance, some of the miracles. Did you know in the Quran that it talks about space travel, going into outer space? Did you know in the Quran that it tells us how the human being is formed when he's still a microscopic dot inside of his mother? And what happens when that little dot is fertilized by the father and how it begins to grow, what it's shaped like? Did you know in the Quran it talks about the trimesters that a woman goes through while she's going to deliver the baby? But then it tells you some things in the Quran that we have no way, at least not today, to verify, to prove yes or no. Did you know the Quran talks about where two seas come together, but they never really meet? And today we can prove that's a fact. And the mountains and how they reach into the earth. And more and more and more. And we're going to take a break and come back and prove it to you. So don't go away. Sit right there with more Beauties of Islam coming up next. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is forever. Now we're back. You're watching the beauties of Islam. Just before we went to the break, I kind of threw some stuff out at you on purpose because I want you to sit there and think about this stuff. How could it be that a book revealed in the desert of Arabia 1,400 years ago is going to talk about space travel? I don't think so. I'm sure that's what you were thinking about. Maybe. Or at least if you've heard it, you're going to say, where is that in the Quran? I did hear something about that. Or maybe you're wondering, what did he say about us being formed inside of our mother, being mentioned in the Quran? Well, there's more, a lot more. But let's go to those right away. Let's talk about that. Inside of the mother. Now, you cannot imagine, even guess, what that would look like unless you've seen some of the latest of the scientific studies that have been produced, and I have seen them, when they take a microscope and they are able to insert the teeny tiny lens inside of the mother to actually show what happens when the egg is fertilized, what happens when the sperm touches it, how it attaches itself to the wall uh, inside of the uh, womb, and then as it breaks through the skin and forms the blood clot and begins to draw its life from the host, which is the mother. Then it begins to shape itself and it looks very much like a leech, which is, uh, you know, the little creature down in the water in the Amazon River gets on you, sucks your blood out. Then how it grows in the trimesters and gets shape and it's in shape and out of shape and how what comes first is the hearing and then the seeing. 
All of the things I described to you are well known today. You can ask anybody in embryology and they'll tell you this is without a doubt. You're describing what's uh, what we know. So what? But if you ask them, could anybody have known about this at the time of Christopher Columbus? They'd say, oh, come on, please, that's not even possible. You say, well, now, could somebody have known about this at the time of Joan of Arc? They'd say, no, that's not possible either. Could somebody have known about this at the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him? They say, well, when did Muhammad live? You say, 1,400 years ago. 1,400 years ago? <laughs> People didn't know anything back then. In fact, didn't he live in a desert? Yes. In a desert in Arabia 1,400 years ago? No, I'm sure. No, he couldn't know that. It's in the Quran. That's one of the very first things that comes in the revelation. Bismillah. is how the Quran begins. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Iqra. Bismi Rabbika Ladi Khalaq. Recite in the name of your Lord who created the human being from an alaq. And the word alaq describes exactly what I just told you. It is a leech looking clot of blood clinging inside of the wall of the uterus. How did anybody guess that? It also says the word uh, in Arabic. Mudga. What is mudga? And it's talking about this chewed lump. It describes in the Arabic language, in the Quran, the stages of the trimesters that the woman goes through when she's having the baby inside of her. How could this be? Unless it was coming from the one who created the human being in the first place. Now, there's another point with this, though that these signs that we're hearing here are not just so you could call it a book of science. In fact, that's not the important point. The important point is for you to realize that there really is a law. He's giving you signs. He's giving you indications. He's making it easy for you to find the right path and then to come to conclusions because he's going to tell you things that your rational mind is not going to be able to accept. You're not going to be able to just say, yeah, I'll take that unless you're not really thinking. But he's going to challenge you with these things so that when you do realize that this did come from Allah, that I'll have faith in it, I'll believe in him because he wouldn't lie to me. And there's a reason behind it. Even though I don't know what the reason is, but I'll do it. Let's now come to the one that I promised you. I wanted you to hear about the space travel. Hmm? Allah says in chapter... 55, this is chapter 55, Surah Al-Rahman, verse 33. Now, it's easy to remember. 5533, got it? 5533. Go read it. Oh, you assembly of mankind and jinn, come together, all of you, and try your best to go outside of the Earth's atmosphere. Try your best to go outside of the atmosphere of this Earth. And you will never, ever be able to get outside of the Earth's atmosphere. Ilibi Sultan. What does that mean? Except by a great power. Sultan is the power. That is what you call somebody who's the Sultan. He's the guy in charge of everything. The Sultan, we call him in English. And here we know now today that it takes a tremendous amount of power to lift one of those spaceships up, doesn't it? When you and I are buying our fuel at the pump by the gallon and paying so much for it, when they buy the fuel for that rocket ship, they buy it by the ton. And we pay for that too. But anyway, all of this to send up that rocket ship, so much power, Yilabi Sultan. Amazing? So much more amazing. Wish we had time for more, but you can go to our website and get it there. Beautiesofislam.com Till next time, salam. Peace be upon you. Islam is peace. Islam is ease. Islam is not danger.